Here we go with the second set of video notes in our evolution unit. In this one I'm going to explain the different lines of evidence that scientists point to in support of the theory of evolution. One of the first things that scientists look at is something called homologous structures. Uh, remember we've talked about homo in your biology one class, that prefix means things that are the same. And so homologous structures are features that are similar because they've been inherited from a common ancestor. Right? For example, if we look at the skeletal structure of lots of different animals, it shows a surprising amount of similarity. If you look here at a human bone, human arm, and you have a single humerus, two bones in the forearm, the radius, and the ulna, and then you have five digits. And then you look at other animals that are seemingly very, very different, and they kind of have the same setup. A lizard has one arm bone, two forearms, and five fingers. A cat, one, two, five. A whale, one, two, five. Bats, even though they look very, very different, are mammals. They're classified with uh, humans as mammals. One, two, kind of hard to see there. Five really long fingers. This is what they use to stretch out the skin for the wings. Frogs, one, one, two, five. And a bird, one, two, three. But when you look at them, um, in their younger stages, oftentimes the second one is divided up. They do have five. They kind of fuse together as one big bone to give it a little bit more stability. The opposite of this is something called analogous structures. So an analogous structure is similar as well, but it's only similar because of the function of the environment, not because they're inherited from a common ancestor. So if you think of what a whale flipper would look like, you know, with skin and muscles and all that stuff on it, compared to what a fish fin looks like, and they look kind of similar, you know, kind of similar shape, and they do the same job, but they're very, very different on the inside because they have such different common ancestors. They just both have fins because fins are really good for swimming. The next couple pieces of evidence that we're going to talk about fall under the category of old structures. So the number two piece following homologous structures are vestigial structures. So these are features or organs or some part of the body that have no known use. I like to emphasize the fact that it's no known use. They could have a use, we just don't really know what it is at the present time. So how do these vestigial structures provide evidence for evolution? Well, why would your body make them if they didn't have any use. So maybe they had a use in the past and they're just in the process of disappearing. So for example, you see up here in this little diagram a whale has a bone or a set of bones that look an awful lot like a pelvis. So here they are in the diagram and in actuality. And if you look they're not connected to anything. They're not even connected to the spine. They certainly aren't connected to legs. So why would a whale have these bones in the middle of its body that are seemingly doing anything that would look an awful lot like a pelvis. Well, the best explanation is that it used to have legs that they were attached to in the past and they're in the process of disappearing. So that would make the whale pelvis a pretty good example of a vestigial structure. Another example that's commonly given would be the human appendix. We don't really know what it does, although there's some hypotheses about it now. Of course, this is a good time to talk about the fact that just because you can live without it does not mean that it is a vestigial organ. So for example, you can take out one of your kidneys and you can live without it, but that does not make the kidney a vestigial organ. The next piece of evidence in our old structures would be fossils. Right? You guys probably know what fossils are. These are dead organisms preserved as stone, and they show that things have changed, and that's what evolution is, right? Change in a population of animals over time. So extinct animals show that Things have changed, obviously, enough that they're not around anymore. Or older varieties of animals show how um, the steps of the change have progressed. So if you have a fossil of an organism that is both whale-like and similar to something that would have walked on land, this kind of shows you the steps of the evolution of the whale. And then finally, fossils can help you by showing changes in the environment. So for example, you see these fossils of a whale or a whale-like ancestor and they're in the middle of the desert, well obviously something like that didn't live in the desert so at some point in time there used to be an ocean there. So it also provides some evidence of how climate has changed and how 
the surrounding environment has changed as well. Another commonly cited source of evidence for evolution, or at least the connection of different animals, is DNA. Mostly because all living creatures use DNA, and sometimes they can even share genes. There have been studies where you take some genes from one organism and put them in another organism, and they function just as well. They do the exact same job, even though they're in a different organism. So not only do all organisms have DNA, but some of the genes are identical, or at least very similar. So this really suggests that we had one common ancestor from which all DNA and DNA genes have been inherited. And then you can use that to compare strands of DNA to see how closely related organisms are. If there's more DNA in common, chances are they're probably more closely related. Another commonly used piece of evidence is embryology, because the embryos of very different organisms often look very similar. So, for example, in very early stages of human development, there's little tiny tails. Uh, when you look at pictures of or images of birds, you can see that they have basically hands forming. So this is a bird right here. And you can see they've got fingers and hands, but they eventually turn into looking more like a human hand. And all this kind of suggests that we're coming from a common ancestor, that we look very similar because we're more closely related. And the more similar we look, as embryos, the more closely related we probably are. So there we go. That wraps up the notes on the five lines of evidence that are commonly cited in support of evolution.